You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Somebody going to run up in eternal destruction forever and ever. Because that's the covenant God established with humanity that if you're lost, and I'm giving you an opportunity to come back to the covenant because I'm going to die myself, and then when you don't have no power, I'm going to send back my spirit. receive words from Prophet H. Walker. Let's give the prophet man another thing. Maybe see the Again, thank God for the tremendous sacrifice of his faithful, his true church, and that is the true light church. Again, that true light which lighteth the path of every man that cometh into the world. Uh, heavy envelope from Elder Willis. $200. Heavy envelope from Brother Kenya, $180. I think he just gave an envelope the other night. Amen. Thank God. Uh, here's another heavy envelope. Elder Ricky again, $200. And some just keep on giving. Giving and giving. But I want to say again, your labor is not in vain. Amen. Uh, Evangelist Brooks. Amen. Offering. Again, we're so thankful for those who have sold out to God Almighty. And brothers and sisters, in these evil times, you're going to have to sell out. And I mean committed all the way. You know, when God established his kingdom, and he established the first covenant. Yeah. And YouTube, hear me now. In the first covenant, he required a sacrifice where blood was offered. Whether a turtle dove, oxen, a lamb. Amen. There had to be a blood sacrifice. On the day of atonement, they would make that sacrifice. But a few days later, they go right back and doing the same sins that they had just atoned or accounted for through the blood sacrifice. So when God saw that man was trying to get ahead of him, he said, I'll introduce another covenant. I'm not going to cut them off except those who died without mercy, who violated Moses' statutes. He said, I'll introduce another covenant. But it still had to be settled by blood. Lord. But this blood would, could not be an animal sacrifice. Man. It had to be a human being. Hold it. And the Bible said he searched and couldn't find nobody, nobody. who was worthy. Amen. None of the patriarchs, none of the prophets, nobody was qualified to make this uh, supreme sacrifice. Amen. So God, according to the book of Isaiah, yes. he took upon himself a human body. Yes. He became the arm or the extension of God in a physical form and came down through what? I believe it was 42 generations and died on Calvary's cross to bring humanity back to himself. Because humanity was lost. Yeah. He said, I'll give them another covenant or another chance. This time, he made the sacrifice himself. And he walked among humanity. And he tested 
the desires and the temptations firsthand, yet without sin. Is that right? Amen. When we receive the Spirit of God, that's all the power and the strength we need to press through this life's journey. Amen. But we have to make up our mind. I want to make the sacrifice within myself. I want to present my body as a holy vessel unto the Lord. Unless we can understand that God today requires your body as a sacrifice. I believe the scripture tells us in Romans, the 12th chapter. Maybe somebody better get me that right quick. Amen. Before I get into my main text, uh, get me 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I beseech you, brethren. By the mercies of God. That's God's grace, His mercy. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. Now he says a living sacrifice, or while you are yet alive, holy. Amen. The vessel that comes to God, even under grace, must now be a holy entity unto God. When we understand that it's because of the multiple temptations and primarily those of the brainwashing context, uh, watching T.D. Jakes, watching uh, Kenneth Copeland, watching Joyce Myers, they'll cause you to lower your guard. And when you lower your guard, you lower the standard of righteousness. You cannot allow yourself to be persuaded by someone who's not persuaded by the Holy Scriptures, amen, and you want to follow them blindly to your own destruction. Hell is real. Well, you spend eternity is real. Listen to me, somebody. This is not just a fairy tale. Somebody's going to burn up in eternal destruction forever and ever. Because that's the covenant God established with humanity that if you're lost, and I'm giving you an opportunity to come back to the covenant because I'm going to die myself, and then when you don't have no power, I'm going to send back my spirit so that you can have the power, so therefore there's no excuse. Everybody, praise God got the same chance to press through this journey but he can't make it so that it's so uh, trickery a uh, trickeration with words yeah. Lord I, I, I believe in you and I'm going to repeat, repeat ver uh, verse uh, Romans 10 and 10 now I'm automatically saved but where is your sacrifice Amen. verse 2 said be not conformed to what to this world but be ye transformed. If there was no such thing as a change, why would there be necessary for repentance? Yes. And if there is no change and there is no repentance, well then brothers and sisters, everything that God did at Calvary was in vain. So we have to understand through clever words, these false preachers are telling people you can live like the devil but you still go to heaven. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You got to live something for the Lord. And you've got to make a commitment to God. But it can't be done unless you receive the knowledge of His will. I want to take note in Colossians, uh, the first chapter, jump right into verse 9. In this scripture text, now God is trying to explain that we have to take upon a new understanding. Give me verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. That you might be filled with the knowledge. Now wait a minute. Since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, the New Testament church now, the fledgling church, yes. and to desire that you might be filled with the what? Knowledge of His will. Uh-huh. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And spiritual understanding. Now let's connect it to verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Now the spiritual understanding that you can understand the will of God through knowledge is that you might walk worthy of God. That you might be accountable. That you might have a, a, a semblance of understanding to understand that God's will is that everybody live a holy life. He would that none should perish, but that all come to repentance. So when we understand this, then we have to make 
a transformation and you can't do it when you're still flirting with the world. Amen. You've got to come out and be separate. Amen. We are each other's keeper. We do uh, 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 take care of one another. Let the strong be the infirmities of the weak. If I can't make my sacrifice this week, somebody else will. Right, right. And praise the Lord, next month, Maybe I'll be able to. But if I still can't make my sacrifice, somebody else will step up. And there's always going to be somebody who will step up for the kingdom. Praise God. This is what the covenant responsibility is all about. Everybody is not going to give up. Everybody's not going to quit. Everybody's not going to have a weak, timid spirit. Because I get a little bit knocked down or knocked back or... Or, or trampled, maybe because someone didn't speak to me, somebody don't like me. Amen. I can't quit the race. Amen, I still got to press on. I still got a battle on my hand. I'm not fighting my brother and my sister. Amen. I'm not fighting envy and strife and jealousy. I'm fighting the devil. Amen. He's my enemy, my mortal enemy. Hallelujah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. But it's against powers and principalities in high places. high places. Now he lets you know the devil got some type of authority. Amen. Where did he get that authority? God gave it to him. Amen. <laughs> Have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, right. yeah but I can't bother him because you got a fence around right. him. So right. the devil and God had a conversation yeah. about somebody who was handpicked to give a testimony to the church today that you can make it. And you won't have to worry about going through the uh, tribulation that Job went through. You're going through a tribulation, but not like Job. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. But he picked a man yeah. to let you know, even if it comes to that, you still can make it. Why? Because I'm with you. Amen. Job suffered. All the flesh came off his body. Yep. Wife put him out the house, yes. praise the Lord, and even told him to commit suicide. Oh, God then rejected you. His friends came and said, why don't you just give up? Because if you had favor with God, you wouldn't be going through this. Yes. But Job said, I'm going to wait here until my change comes. Come on, wait right here until my Redeemer comes. Brother and sister, Redeemer has come to you. Yes. So we ain't got no excuse. Yes, we got to fight. Yes, we're going through. Yes, there's going to be some heartache. Yes, there's going to be some tears. Yes, there's going to be some stumbling. But I still going to pick up my cross and follow after God. Amen. The sacrifice is within. Yes. And brothers and sisters, hear me. It's a complete sellout. The rich man came to God and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he was for real. Amen. And God told him, after he psyched him out of his shoes, yes. have you honored your father and mother? He said, yes. Yeah. Have you kept the commandments? Yes. Do you love everybody? Yes. But there's one thing you lack. You got too much. Amen. Go and sell all your material gain and then come back. Yes. He couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. There's something he wanted to throw under the rug. Something he wanted to save for Bring a rainy day. Yeah. Amen. If you got something under the rug, you better turn it loose. Amen. And there ain't no such thing as a rainy day when you save. Every day is glorious when you save. Every day, praise God, is happy when you're covered by the blood Amen. because you can't lose a battle. Might get knocked back a step or two, but you still can't lose a battle Amen. because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God never lost, how can you lose? And you got the spirit of God in you. I feel good in my soul. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about church all day long. I want to be in church. I love church. It's not a burden to me. Oh, I got to go to church. No, you don't have to go. If you don't want to go, stay at home. I come because I'm happy. That's right, Amen. But I can't be happy unless I come. That's right. Amen. I don't care if you get a brand new car. Yes. Right off the lot. Don't put no gas in it. It ain't going nowhere. nowhere. So I come to church, praise God, to get happy. Yes. I get charged up. I get my tank on full. Hallelujah. So I can make it through the rest of the week. I got to come to church because I need church. So therefore, when I need, I got to take some church.
I'm in the church. But the church is in me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me First Corinthians nine twenty-seven. Amen. I want you to watch where the apostles going here. I present my body. Yes. I keep under my body uh -huh. and bring it unto subjection. I bring it under subjection. I've shared this, I think, last week, a couple weeks ago. Yes. Paul was saying that you have to discipline yourself. And bring the body under a restraint. When the Holy Ghost comes, it gives you the power that you need to resist temptation. That's right, yes. There would be nobody going to the lake of fire if everything was smooth and easy. Yes. No temptation, no desires, amen. No uh, 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 unclean thoughts. Yes. But when you learn self control, you learn how to discipline your mind and you only let a thought that's not clean go so far. Amen. Now they're going to come. Now I'm a preacher, a prophet in the Lord's house that will tell you the truth. Amen. I ain't like these devils out here. That's right, that's right. I'm telling you the truth. Unclean thoughts are going to come. But if you rebuke those thoughts, yes. rebuke the devil and he'll flee from you. So you got to keep on rebuking and keep on meditating on clean things until pretty soon the clean things chop out the unclean things. That's why I shared last week, there's got to be a difference between holy and profane. There's got to be a difference between right and wrong. These preachers are, are, are bringing this new age movement, this subhuman culture, where well, there's no right or wrong. Shame, shame, shame. What they have done to America, the greatest country in the world. That's right. They made it a, a, a Babylon. Yes. A den of unclean things, yes. creeping Amen. things, nasty things. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody was telling me about a new, uh, one of them children, uh, things that are coming out now, where they're trying to insert uh, homosexuality. Yeah. Why? Because they're programming very cleverly yes. the youth. And someone will tell me on the cereal box, they even got that same thing. Uh, one, matter of fact, one of the primary uh, TV children uh, actors, they found out he was a sodomite. Amen. Sesame Street? Yeah. Amen. Elmo. Elmo. Yeah. All the children love Elmo. That's right. A great big devil. That's what he was. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. But they are systematically trying to break down the moral structure. But brothers and sisters, we've got to have some self-control. Paul said, Amen. read again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I like that part. I keep under my body. That's that vile body, that, that unclean thing. But I bring it under subjection. As long as we're in an earthly vessel, you're going to have a fight with the flesh. But I can't walk by the flesh. I've got to walk by the spirit. Give me a, 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 a eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Amen. And jump right in around verse, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's where I want to go. The carnal mind or the fleshly you is an enemy of God. Uh huh. For it is not subject to the law of God. It's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. It can't be. The fleshly you. That's why again, a God told the apostles, go to the upper room. Now I've handpicked you. But go to the upper room and wait there until you receive power from on high after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yeah. Now they couldn't go nowhere and preach. They couldn't go, they couldn't witness it. Why? Because they didn't have the power yet. Yes. Now when he was with them, the physical being of God was the power. But now the physical personality is gone back to glory. So he got to leave them something because he said, I won't leave your comforters. Yeah. I'll send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And he'll dwell in you. Praise God. Now, when that spirit comes inside of you, you got everything you need to overcome every demon spirit and every obstacle the devil will put against you. 
Satan's got to flee. I'm a living witness. Hallelujah. Difficult situation in your life got to flee. Uh, depression and, 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 and those areas where you get so uh, beside yourself, you feel that nobody likes you. If you think for too long on a depressive moment, pretty soon you will lower your standard and you dwelling on things like who likes me and who don't. And the next thing you know, you ain't thinking nothing about Jesus. The devil's a master of psychology because that's the only weapon he has. He can't hurt you, but he'll sure scare you to death. I'm telling you. He'll make you either run away from the church or run to the church. But Paul said, we are not unaware of his devices. So church, keep in mind that only through the scripture knowledge are we able to overcome because we're developing through the scripture and understanding of God. Uh, I want to go to Matthew 7th chapter and jump right in around verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that confesses me as Lord. And again, I want T.D. Jakes, Joyce Myers, Kenneth Copeland. I want you to read that text. As, as, now, I, I know, I know you, you don't get a King James Bible because it's too strong for you. So that's why you get the Amplified Version and the uh, uh, NIV Version. Because, see, this is, this is too heavy for you. And, and, and Joe Olson, he don't even carry a Bible now. You know why? Because somebody will tell him, yeah, you'd quote that scripture, but what about Matthew 7, 21? Amen. Look. Now, what are you going to do? He caught, he caught in the middle. So what did he do? He don't carry no Bible. Amen. How are you a Christian and you ain't got the Christian word? Come on now, amen. I'm not interested in your word. I'm not interested in what you think. I'm interested in what God thinks. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you can't tell me what thus saith the Lord, how are you speaking to me? Amen. Holy hallelujah. Keep your social club. Amen. I got a church. Right. Lord. Hallelujah. Social club where they pay dues. Amen. Now we pay tithes here. Yeah. For the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Read. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now over in Colossians, the second chapter, we already showed you about the will of the Father. The Bible is to give us that knowledge so that we can understand the will of God. And then the Holy Ghost comes that we can fulfill that which we have already learned concerning His perfect will. So I thank God that I'm saved tonight. I thank God that I don't have a sad story. I thank God we've had setbacks, no setbacks. Uh, I was thinking maybe the second Sunday in July we'd be in Atlanta, but it's a little bit delayed. But one thing is inevitably going to happen. We're going to be there. And there will be nothing you can do about it. Get back and do whatever. You can blow hard and make ugly faces. Hallelujah, but ain't nothing you can do about it. We're going to march into true life, what they call church, in Atlanta, Georgia. And then we're going to leave that and go to Washington, D.C. I'm glad about it. Well, how can you do these things? You ain't got no great big church. Oh, I got a great big church. God's church is a great big church. But there's only a few in the church. And few there be that can find it. But the few can make the sacrifice and we can press on toward that mark because somebody is going to stand up and defend this book. And True Light is going to do just that. I thank God for the word tonight. I feel good in my soul. I, time is going so fast. This is it's Friday already, huh? Yes. My goodness, you mean to tell me we got to wait two days to Sunday? Amen. Yes. Wait, I think we might be having a little bit church tomorrow. 
Three o'clock, and then we have a little bit of church. Yeah. That's the top of his band. Hallelujah. Yeah. Have a little singing. Yeah. A little clapping. Yeah. A little foot stomping. Yeah. We're going to have church. Yeah. And then come right back Sunday and have some more church. Yeah. Because we are sanctified in a holy vessel yeah. unto the Lord. Yeah. I will never draw back. I will move along. I have said goodbye to this world of woe. I will walk with Jesus, sweeter so, and I'll be loved in this world. Love Talk Radio.